Good evening, Booktube, YouTube. This is Johnny. And I thought I'd make a video since tomorrow night, Lord willing, my wife will be home from being out in the Northwest visiting our son Josiah and his wife Hannah and little, little daughter Marika Rose. <laughs> and I suppose I'm, I'm having the same problem I had last night. I don't know what to do with myself. I read all day and I wrote in my diary. I messed with the internet and I got up really early this morning. I got up at five o'clock. I was having some dream <laughs> and I couldn't get back to sleep. I woke up to, and then I couldn't get back to sleep. So I said, well, I can just get up and go back to bed anytime during the day. So I got up, fixed a pot of coffee, fixed myself some oatmeal, had breakfast, wrote in my diary, my January 2020 diary, and I ended on page 72 for the year 2020. And I have already, Lord willing, January the 22nd, 2020 for tomorrow morning. It is January the 21st here in West Michigan. It is 6.13 in the evening. I got four, at least five hours before I can go to bed. Last night what I did, uh, I made a video really late last night. I think around 10 o'clock I think I made that video. But tonight it's 6.13. And I don't really... I usually make a video spontaneously. I don't really, I just, like I've said, when I started making videos for YouTube, for BookTube, it was just part of my diary. Uh, I've been writing, a, keeping a diary since I was in high school, and I have an online diary, Crooked Finger, since March of 2001. And now I am posting videos about my reading life as a Christian. As you all know, I, I started my booktube channel to talk about Christian books. And, but also as a Christian, you read everything. I mean, you read, well, I'll give an example. Today, uh, I read this morning, once again, I, re I read for morning devotions, The Works of William Perkins, volume eight. And I've been reading his A Discourse of Conscience. So I read that this morning, writing in my diary. Well, see, I got up at 5. I had breakfast. I got sleepy around 7 o'clock. I went back to bed, slept until 8.30, got up, read some more, wrote my diary, messed with the computer. And then I went to the credit union to get some money. And I didn't go any, I, on the way home, I passed a little thrift store, Bibles from Mexico. And I stopped there to look at their used books. I do that at least once a week. I visit the thrift stores just around where we live. Like there's Bibles from Mexico, there's Action House, there's Goodwill. And I tend to visit those. And plus I have the book nook where I volunteer the library used bookstore. So the majority of my used books I get from those four places. Now sometimes if the weather is really nice, I'll drive North Holland and go to the Goodwill there and the Salvation Army and Humane Society used thrift stores. But I don't really do that if I'm really... The weather's really good, I'm in a good mood, I don't feel freaked or anxious. And once again, do I really need any more books? I find enough just around where we live. So I went to Bibles from Mexico before, I make, before coming home from the credit union. I found these used books for $2 and I think it was $2.50. I found this book at the thrift store, Heart of Land, Heart of the Land, Essays, The Last Great Places. 
Now these are essays like nature and I, I had this book in paperback. I, and this was a nice, really hardback. It's only 50 cents. And the foreword is by Barry Lopez. I just showed you. I just bought Barry Lopez's new book, Horizon, his memoir about all his travels and adventures. So I got this for 50 cents. And then I picked up a novel I wasn't really sure about. But I collect this writer. This is Charles Baxter. This is his little novel, First Light. I have it, but it was only you know a quarter. You can't go wrong with a quarter. And I can put this in my in my van, roving library. And then I'm mean, I'm having a cup of tea. And then I picked up a book that I've heard about. There's been other books on this. It's the Ordeal by Hunger, the story of the donor party. This is where these men, I think in the 19th century, got snowbound and they were cut off and their food ran out and they had to resort to cannibalism, something like that. But this is uh, one of the really well-known accounts by Stewart, by George R. Stewart. This is published by... University of Nebraska, University of Nebraska Press, and uh, so I got this for a quarter. I didn't have a copy of this. And then I picked. I found this interviews with Seamus Henley. He's an Irish poet. <coughs> I have a little anthology of poetry that he's edited down the lower level. These are interviews. Uh, interviews with, excuse me, <coughs> same as Henley, Henley, uh, Dennis O'Driscoll. So I don't know. So I wanted to look at this, and then I found this book. Uh, I thought I had a copy of it, but it's not in my library thing, and. I'm sure my wife read this last year or the year before. It's called Stiff, The Curious Lives of Human Cadavers by Mary Roach. I thought I had this. 8,000 people in library thing had this book. It's really popular. And then I picked up a Civil War book, American History. I, I usually, if I see a good American History Civil War book, I'll get it if it's really cheap and because I have a whole library of Civil War books because I as I've said we when I'm when we were uh, when I was in seminary getting my master's degree in theology and church history we lived in Mississippi Jackson Mississippi and our ch our kids were little Caleb Josiah and Bethany and we had some older friends who were Civil War buffs history buffs and we really got into the Civil War, and we visited Vicksburg, and we visited Gettysburg, and Bull Run, and Ant Edom, and got all kinds of books on the Civil War, biographies, and so I kept all that stuff, and because that, that those friends of ours and the, Bob, Mr. Bob, and Mrs. Ruth, they gave our kids lots of Civil War books, and we we have them all. I never never got rid of them. I think I've shown those in the past videos. But I found this one today for 50 cents. The Gray Raiders of the Sea, the eight Confederate warships destroyed the Union's high seas commerce by Chester G. Earn. Earn. So I don't know. You know, you can't go wrong for 50 cents. I, I'll... It has all these... Of these ironclads, battleships, warships. I don't know. They look kind of interesting. When you go to Vicksburg, they have the Vicksburg. There's a there is the um, there was a battle there in Vicksburg along the river there. I think it was. My mind just went blank. But anyway, there's they have a museum with an ironclad, and encased in this huge display, an ironclad. And um, 
So, but these are just different ships. I don't think they're all ironclads. As I look at them, they were like steamboats. So, anyway, so I got those for, you know, two dollars. I, I already put them down the lower level because I'm trying to clear out stuff from the living room before Carol gets home. The table's getting massively piled. I got a book in the mail today. I mentioned I was getting some novels in the mail and one came. This is Ariel's Crossing by Batford Merle. He's a writer that I came across uh, in reading an, uh, reading an interview online with James Purdy. You know, as I just showed you, I got his complete stories by James Purdy. In an interview, he was talking about writers that are really good writers that are unknown. They're not really in the public eye. And he mentioned this guy, Bradford Merle. And he's written several novels. And I looked at him, I looked at him on Amazon, the, the summary of them, a synopsis of them. And this one came out in 2002, Ariel's Crossing, and I bought it used. I got it in the mail today. I'm always buying novels. I mean, I, and I'm not really finishing the ones I have. So I don't know why I keep buying them, because they always look so interesting. If I see a novel that looks really interesting, and it's 50 cents, or a quarter, or even a dollar, or two dollars, I just buy them. I just, I think I have, I have so many novels, but this one looked really interesting. Uh, it says here in the back, after years of being kept in the dark, Ariel Rankin learns that her birth father is a man named Kip Car uh, Cal Calder, who went to Vietnam and then disappeared in Laos, Laos before she was born. The discovery shakes her world to the core. Realizing she no longer elude, can elude her past, she can no longer elude her past if she is to have a future. Ariel leaves behind her life in New York City, heads west to New Mexico to find the mysterious Calder and the truth of who she is. Auspiciously weaving social with magical realism, award-winning author Bradford Murrow delivers a moving exploration of a search for identity and a place in the world. What, what attracted me to this novel was that it takes place in New Mexico, the Southwest. You see the, the horses in the back and the horses in the front. So it has this Southwest kind of setting, which I, I kind of like novels that take place in New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado, Texas, Southern California, so I got that in the mail today. And like I said, I've been reading this this evening, The Great Concert of the Night by Jonathan Buckley. I'm trying to finish this one <laughs> of a novel. I mean, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, it's really uh, has a very somber kind of melancholy mood to it, but it's very good writing. I really, uh, it was published by the New York Review of Books and uh, really enjoy reading it so so that's what uh going on in my book world today my day-to-day -day existence in uh, the last days of the american empire so yeah so i just thought i'd show these books i did take them down already and then I brought them up here to show you because I gotta have something to show in a video. I just can't sit here and ramble about my my little life here. So yeah, it's a Tuesday night now. It's 6.26 at night. Uh, I don't know, you know, I, I was thinking I might get back into reading some 17th century Puritan theology or read some of Van Manstrit on the doctrine of God or something like that. Uh, I don't know. I did get my Bible out. I thought about reading from 1 Corinthians 15 about the resurrection, but because we're talking about cadavers, that even though the body is dead, 
when we die, it is raised again. Uh, the body is sacred in that this body, even though it may be eaten by sharks or destroyed by an atomic, atomic bomb, God brings us our bodies and raises them into, an, into a resurrection body. And, yeah, see, that's what it says. I suppose I'm going to just read it since it's right here in front of me. He says in 1 Corinthians 15, But someone will say, How are the dead raised up, and with what body do they come? Foolish one, what you sow is not made alive unless it dies. And what you sow, you do not sow, that the body that shall be but mere grain, perhaps wheat or other grain. But God, but God gives it a body as he pleases, and to each seed its own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of animals, another fish, another of birds. There is also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. So also in the resurrection of the dead, the body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man Adam became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first but the natural, and afterward the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of the dust, and the second man, capital, is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. As we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. So yeah, it's sown in corruption and raised in incorruption. Sown in dishonor, raised in honor. And one day all those who have put their faith in Christ, united to Him, mystically they will shine with His, the, the image of the heavenly Adam. The, the, the glory of Christ. So I'll sign off. Hope you're having a good week. Thank you for the new subscribers. Thank you for the comments. And until next time, bye.